If building large Lego fortifications isn't your forte, well that's unfortunate. I know this set isn't the most affordable, but for me, I think it's fort worth it. Who knows, in a few years this could be worth a fortune. Ahoy all, I'm Josh as a Josh Build Stuff, and today we're talking about the all new, based on the old El Dorado Fortress set. This set just came out in July 2023. It contains 2,500 pieces and costs $215 here in the US. In my opinion, this is a beautiful recreation of the classic El Dorado Fortress set, which was released in 1989. This set pays tribute to it in a lot of wonderful ways, and I would say improves upon it in even more ways. This set has something the original never had, the nostalgia factor. It also has this little ship, which is actually pretty significant. We'll talk more about that in a second. The inclusion of this ship tells us that this is a fort slash port. It may be my favorite port, second only to that one where we show off all of our previous work over at Portfolio, but both of these ports are far better than my least favorite port, Fort Polio. This set is a play feature appreciator's playground. It has everything you could ask for in a large scale set. Beautiful exteriors, beautiful interiors, great play features, a working crane, firing cannons, a huge selection of great minifigures, and my favorite part, modularity. That's something the original never had. You can rearrange the pieces of this fort. We'll look more at that in a little bit. If I'm being forced to point out one negative about this set, well, for a fort that's named after a city made of gold, ironically, there's no shiny gold coins included here. There is some hidden treasure here. I can't wait to discover it with you all. So if you want my very early opinion, I think this set is incredible, whether you're a classic Pirates fan or not. But for those of you who are classic Pirate fans, or if you were lucky enough to be around in the late 80s, or if you were lucky enough to own the original El Dorado Fortress, this is a pickup for you for sure. Fort sure. Fort sure. That's a pun. So let's travel back in time to 1989. If you buy $1,000 of Apple stock right now, it'll be worth $279,000 by the time this set is recreated. As for me, in 89, I was two years old, so I didn't have much knowledge of the stock market. I did just poop my pants. So if you'll excuse me, I've gotta go change. Let's talk minifigures first and foremost, and then we'll talk more about this little ship, and then we'll dive into all of the details of this fabulous fort. As a faithful homage to the original set, we once again get two pirate minifigures and six imperial figures who are guarding the fort from those pirate minifigures. First of all, comparing the imperials with their predecessors, I think LEGO recreated them beautifully, kept just enough of that classic detail while adding a little more of that modern detail. The imperial worth elaborating on is this fellow with the fancy hat up top. I believe he's supposed to be the governor. In the original set, that was Governor Broadside. Broadside, of course, named for the naval maneuver, which in my opinion is always the right angle from which to attack another ship. Though he looks the part, I don't think he's meant to be broadside. The instruction booklet itself says today, the new El Dorado Fortress is a thriving port with a new governor and a regiment of trusty Imperial Guards. Ignoring the fact that these were Imperial soldiers, not Imperial Guards, the Imperial Guards were the ones with the red coats and they didn't come for a few years after this set was originally released. Ignoring that fact and pausing the minifigure discussion, I think it's very interesting that Lego and the designers have chosen to say that this is the same El Dorado Fortress, but it's not a recreation of the original set. This is instead just the same fortress many years down the line. And that's why some parts of the fort are in worse condition than the original and some have been improved over the original set. It, it's just an interesting direction that Lego decided to go. Anyway, back to this unnamed governor. He doesn't lead alone. It's a team, Fortress 2. And speaking of, I always mained soldier and this set contains plenty of them. The other miscellaneous soldiers here, as compared to their originals, well, are accurate representations. They got them funny tall hats. They got those cool epaulets on their shoulders. They got their rifles in their backpacks, and in this set, though, we've even got a couple of female soldiers. Look at that, inclusivity. The soldiers do sport muskets or sabers. Conveniently, those sabers don't weigh very much, making these the first ever Lego light sabers. A couple of the soldiers also have tricorn hats. I don't know if that means they're a different rank. Lego really didn't give us many details about the characters themselves. Speaking of lack of details, we also get two pirate minifigures here. One unnamed, undetailed, nice recreation of a generic pirate with the generic bandana hat, and also an unnamed female pirate. In the original sets, there was only ever one female minifigure and her name was Anne. I don't know if this is supposed to be a recreation of Anne, but again, if we're many years later than this could be, it's someone else. There is a very noticeably missing minifigure here. Of course, Captain Redbeard, who was included in the original set and was included in a ton of original pirate sets. You know that pirate. He was the famous captain who suffered from just about every pirate ailment of the day. Peg leg, eye patch, a hooked hand, red hair, probably scurvy, but that isn't canon. This is. 
I'm not exactly sure why LEGO left out the captain, but I have my suspicions, which I'll tell you about in a minute. We also get a monkey and a parrot. The monkey is worse than the old monkey, though he is a little more detailed. He's lost almost all of his posability. There is one hidden minifigure in this set that even I forgot was there, but buried deep within the fort's foundation, perhaps serving as a cautionary tale bone, presenting the perils of looking for lost loot. There's a skeleton under this set, now doomed to an eternity of solidarity with no body to keep him company. Before we get to the fort, we need a mode of transportation. Why don't we take this little merchant ship? Again, this ship is a nice recreation from another classic pirate set, this time from set 6277, the Imperial Trading Post, released in 1992. This is a beautiful replica. Obviously, it's based on that ship, but this time with some more modern details and build techniques. I love the size. I love the simplicity. I love the cloth sails included here, even though my four-year-old kept saying those aren't Lego, which I'm going to say means I'm raising him right. But I think this boat is a fantastic inclusion and honestly I think this could have been a set on its own. I looked into picking up a copy of that Imperial Trading Post way too expensive. That ship has sailed. But don't make the same mistake here. Get this schooner schooner then later. If you don't want it, that's fine. Whatever floats your boat. Or you could wait for a good sail. But personally, I think this set already includes a pretty great sail. Finally, we have arrived at the fort, and after that long journey, I still think it looks fantastic. The most notable difference between this set and the original is that the original came with that large molded ramped base plate. Obviously, LEGO does not make those base plates anymore, so we got to build this set up with a bunch of great rock work. Conveniently, that means we get a new version which has five times the number of pieces and quadruple the price of the original. Yay for us! Some backstory to explain this enthusiasm. I've always loved forts. I've always loved Spanish style forts. I grew up in Florida. Heck, I was born in Fort Lauderdale. And one of my favorite places to visit, and ironically one of my least favorite types of grass, was St. Augustine, which is full of awesome Spanish style forts, just like this one still standing today, that you can go visit. So for this set, very nice to see that they stuck with the classic color scheme, the white on the outside, the red on the inside, kind of like me, except the inside of this fort is a bunch of brick Work. That's actually accurate to the original set, except the bricks in the original were just represented with some printed pieces, though you can see bricks all over this set. When building this set, there was actually a lot of build-up, literally and figuratively. Starting with all this rock work builds your anticipation, and the construction just gets more exciting as you work your way up to the fort walls, and then you get to the little room details, and eventually all the way up to these battlements, and you're left with a big, beautiful model. And speaking of all that rock work, if you're a fan of the sloped 45 2x2 double concave brick, this is the set for you because it's got a lot of them. I mentioned it before, but my absolute favorite part about this set, which will allow us to see a lot of the details within this set a lot more clearly, is its modularity. Watch this. Look at all these parts that we can put together in a bunch of fun different ways, like this way. The pieces are just connected via little clips. I worry about the integrity of those clips over time. Let's move that. Um, but this is one of the configurations that the instructions show. I think it's great for playability, displayability if you got thinner shelves. And like I said, you can move a lot of these pieces around. It's actually surprising how many different ways you can put this thing together. But now it's a lot easier to see a lot of the details in this set. So let's talk about those. Now where it was just printed on the original set, we now have a fully brick built paved cobblestone path, which is paving the way towards future internet culture in that it leads to the first ever case of gatekeeping because it leads to a gate. Though we are making some progress because the original set had solid doors and now we have gates that you can see through, which is fitting because we can see the sea through those gates. I love the little hallways and archways and pathways you can follow around this whole fort. It makes the whole thing feel more alive as you can look into different nooks and see supplies and stuff. It reminds me of the line in Pirates of the Caribbean, the line in the Disney ride, not the line in the Disney movie where Jack Sparrow is all like, Bring me that horizon. As far as interiors, we've got a little governor's quarters, which is fittingly named because the room would have to be at least four times this size to be considered a whole room. Up top lined with soldiers and cannons, we've got all these little parapets, which in my opinion is the perfect place to perch your parrot pets. One of the coolest features here is the working crane. I'm gonna name mine Fraser, and where the original fort's crane didn't have much reach, this one feels like it extends for niles and niles, or at least far enough to haul cargo from ship to shore. Within the rock work of that fort, there's a couple of hidden compartments filled with gold or secret letters or leaky casks. We can even see those casks leaked a whimper, otherwise known as a little wine. Another one of my favorite spots in the fort just to visit is the little jail here. It's fully enclosed, making you wonder how one could possibly escape. Hint, hint. I even asked the incarcerated. I said, hi, what are you sleeping on? He said, hey, 
hay. But if we look under that hay, there's a trap door. You can open that hatch and click file close on your Excel, slide down the chute to your first stop on your journey to freedom, the crust station. Then it's smooth sailing to a life of Let's be honest, probably more piracy. We've got a couple palm trees decorating the exterior. I think these leaves are probably that plant-based biodegradable material. I know these leaves are classic, but I think I'm more fond of the newer leaf pieces. At the far end here, there's an unassuming looking dock, but there's actually something very interesting about it. The fact that there's a picnic laid out on top? No, I think that's just because this piece is used as the center when the fort is all enclosed. There's also a trap door here, which would drop someone into that seaweed kind of dirty looking water below, but that's okay, you can always wash up on shore. But the interesting thing about this dock is that the instructions say that this is a place where the Black Seas Barracuda can dock. This is the Black Seas Barracuda being referred to in those instructions. This is the newer version, and assuming you have the space, this ship can indeed dock right up to that dock. If you don't have this set right now, you might be feeling a little peer pressure to go out and buy it, and I would encourage you to do so if you are able. But this big old Barracuda includes a very interesting little minifigure. That's right, sure enough, here he is. It's Captain Redbeard. And because Redbeard is included in this set, I think that's why he's not in the fort. I think LEGO is trying to make these two sets exist in the same pirate universe, which could mean more pirate sets in the same universe. Let's not get our hopes up. That's just a prediction. It's not canon. But this is... My final thoughts, no one will be surprised to hear me say that you should absolutely buy this set if you are able. It is great on so many levels. But I understand this one's not within everyone's budget. That's okay, there's enough fort here for the both of us. Come on over, you can play with this one. Though, I'm not free until the evening in about two weeks, but if that works for you, come on over. It'll be a fortnight. I apologize for nothing. I'll see you next time.